Hey guys, this is gonna be a quick getting started video on how to use your new Jumpstart Pro license. So once you purchase the license, you can download the source code for your Rails application, and you can either use the zip option, which is the easier option. It will allow you to extract the zip file, initialize a new Git repository, and you're off to the races. Now the downside of this is it's a bit harder to apply updates, you have to do that manually. And if you use the git option instead, you can clone our git repo and then use that as a remote for your development. So you can merge in changes from that remote at any time and continue pushing your changes to your fork. So that works very well and is probably the way to go. But keep in mind in either case here, you're going to have to probably eventually manually apply any updates because if you're changing layouts and other things like your theme, it's going to be harder to apply those updates because of merge conflicts and so on. So it can be easier often to actually just read the source code in the repository and pull in the changes you need accordingly. So we're gonna be walking through the Git option here just to walk you through that. And the first step is to connect your GitLab account or to create one and connect it so you can access the Jumpstart repo. I've already got mine uh, connected and we can use the code link in the nav bar to go visit the repo and take a look at the latest source code there. So at any time, if you wanna come check out what's going on, you can, that will all be available on GitLab. Now the next step is to create a private repository somewhere. We can click on this link to do that directly on uh, GitLab. So if we wanted to say, let's create a JSP example project, we wanna make sure that this is a private repo. You paid for the license. It needs to be kept private. It can't be open sourced and that will revoke your license if you are sharing that with other people. So keep that in mind. Um, we're going to create an empty repository here and we'll keep this open because we're going to use this as a remote in our app. But we're going to start by cloning the GitLab Jumpstart Pro repo first. So we'll go to our terminal, we'll run git clone into our my app directory. And if you do this, you can move my app to a better name. So you can say JSP example, or you can change this to say JSP example there, or whatever the app name is that you want. Then you can see me into that directory and our git remote show origin is going to show the jumpstart pro repo so to change this we want to say git remote rename origin to jumpstart and then we can add an origin for our personal or private repository so we'll copy this ssh link here and we will say git remote add origin and paste that in so now our Git remotes will be jumpstart and origin, and then we can go and run git push-u origin master. Push-u origin master. That's going to set the default place that it pushes to is origin and the master branch. And now we can run git push and it will use that um, going forward. So that's going to help us use our own private repository as the main repository and not the jumpstart one. So the benefit of that is that by doing this, now we have access to all of that in our private repo. We have all of the history in those previous commits and anytime we want to pull in the latest changes from jumpstart, we run git fetch jumpstart and git merge jumpstart slash master to grab the master branch changes. So we can simply run this at any time and pull in those changes. Now sometimes you might get merge conflicts which you'll have to go address and then create your merge commit and keep track of all that in your repo. But this is all you need to do to pull in updates into your copy of the repository. Now the readme is going to have the latest instructions on how to get started every time and we are going to be using Ruby 2.6 or higher. The template actually is now on 2.7 because that was recently released on Christmas and we can use that as our default version. Expect this version to change as new versions come out and if you wanna change that, you can edit the .ruby version file, .ruby version and the gem file to adjust the Ruby versions accordingly. Um, we also need a few dependencies here like Bundler. So if you don't have Bundler, just run gem install Bundler and that will install the latest version for you. And we also wanna make sure we have the Redis server and Postgres servers installed. 
We're using Redis for Action Cable, if you wanna use that. Um, Redis is also very important for Sidekick and for caching, if you wanna use that as one database for all of those things. It's nice to keep one service like Redis running, unless you need to also have memcached or something, but you can set that up yourself. So Postgres is our database of choice. You can also customize this if you want. You could use MySQL, and most of our migrations are gonna work for that, but you're gonna have to change some things, like our JSONB columns, over to a compatible version for MySQL. So if you want to make that change, you can run Rails DB system change to MySQL, and you're welcome to go make that change. Just be aware you're gonna have to make some uh, tweaks to the migrations and probably to the template to make it compatible. We're only officially supporting Postgres, but I know that you can definitely run it on MySQL because we've done it in the past, but we're going to only support Postgres officially. The other dependency we need is Image Magic, and that's going to allow us to crop and resize avatars for our uh, users who upload images or any other file uploads that you might want to have. And we're gonna use Yarn to install our node modules. So because I'm on a Mac, I have Homebrew installed, and I can run Brew install Redis, Brew install PostgreSQL, Brew install Image Magic, and Yarn. And so that will get all of my dependencies installed for me on my Mac. But if you're using Windows or Linux, you can look up the uh, commands to install these dependencies on your operating system. The last thing that we want to mention here for our Ruby dependencies is Foreman. If you would like to use it, it will run your proc file. And we have a proc file, a couple proc files. This proc file will be what is run on Heroku automatically for you. We manage that a little bit for you so that you can have Sidekick automatically added to that when you turn it on in Jumpstart Pro. But for development, we have this procfile.dev, which will also include the Webpack dev server. So you can hot reload your JavaScript and your Tailwind assets anytime you save and change those files. So the proc file and procfile.dev are somewhat managed by Jumpstart. It will add things to it as necessary and rewrite it, but you can customize those and tweak them as needed as well. So keep that in mind. Um, Foreman needs to be installed as a global dependency. It's not included in the gem file because you don't want its dependencies to conflict with your Rails apps dependencies. So you want to install this with gem install Foreman like so, and that will make it system-wide available, and then you can run Foreman at any time from the command line, just like you would with Bundler up above. Then last but not least, if you're using Stripe, the Stripe CLI is required for strong customer authentication, which we now support. So any credit cards that require two-factor authentication with your bank will automatically be supported in Jumpstart Pro for Stripe transactions. So that's awesome, but it requires the CLI to forward webhooks so we can see changes to subscriptions and charges and that sort of thing. And it's just important for having a good development test environment anyways. So you can run brew install, Stripe, Stripe CLI, Stripe for Mac, or you can look at the instructions on how to install that um, on your operating system. So once you have all of these things installed, you can finally run bundle to install that and yarn to install all the node modules. So that will get us all our gems and our node modules and we are good to go once this is done. So now you can run the Rails server. This will print out some warnings currently because of uh, gems that aren't fully compatible with Ruby 3 and there are warnings in Ruby 2.7 that say, hey, in Ruby 3, this might break. So we'll wait until those gems get updated like Active Record and Devise Invitable. Those should all be fixed in the near term and those warnings will go away, but you can ignore them for now. Um, once our Rails server is up and running, we can go to localhost 3000 and our application should boot up just fine and be taken to the Jumpstart configuration area. So here is the Jumpstart configuration area. You can go turn on any features you want, configure your application name, your email provider, add an admin user, that sort of thing, add your payments, 
and so on. When you click save changes, this will actually run bundle install behind the scenes to install any new gems like Sidekick and it's going to restart your Rails app for you so that it can use all of those and take you back to the home page. So now you can start using and building your application with Jumpstart Pro. So this whole process is going to install and create some files. So we have a, a credentials file for development, production, staging, and our config jumpstart.yaml as well, which will keep track of all of our changes and our config. We have our git ignore and our yarn lock changes, and you can add all of these and commit them so that you have all of this for development um, on your repository. So you wanna make sure you commit these changes and we'll say set up jumpstart pro and we can get push and that will push it up to our GitLab repository. And I also wanna mention that inside of config credentials, there are some very important files that do not get tracked in Git and that's your key files, development, production, staging, and test key files. Those are all the keys to decrypt your encrypted credentials files. So these files you need to keep safe, create backups of them, and then you can share them with your team so that they can decrypt these credentials files to run the app in development or test. And then you can share the production and staging ones with whomever needs access to the production and staging credentials. So keep track of those, those are very important and something new that we're using in Rails 6 for the environment specific credentials. Now there's instructions on how to set up your credentials in the jumpstart configuration area, but I wanna mention here, you can run Rails credentials edit, environment equals development, or staging or production or test, and this will decrypt your credentials file, open an editor, and we've already set this up with placeholders for all of those configuration variables. So if you wanna have OAuth login with Facebook or Google or GitHub or Twitter, you can go drop your credentials in there and so on. So this is a placeholder for all of those different things that we support and you can just drop your keys in, save this file and it will re-encrypt that file and save it and then you will see that if you made changes, it should show up in a Git status and you can commit that to your repository and push it up. So that is really all there is to it for running Jumpstart Pro. If you would like to use Foreman to run all of the processes like Webpacker, Sidekick, Stripe, and the Rails server, you can. I encourage that in development because there's like four processes you need to run normally. So you can run them all with one command and if anything fails, it's all uh, restartable or will shut down together and so on. So this is nice, but keep in mind that it's going to run on port 5000 by default. So you will need to change your browser to access port 5000 on localhost and you're good to go. So that's everything you need to know to get started to using Jumpstart Pro. But there is also a configuration video on how to go through the admin and set up your configuration. We've added some things since then but all of that's pretty much the same. And then also we have a deployment video you can watch to deploy this to Heroku or to Hatchbox. And as always, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below on YouTube or on the Jumpstart Pro forums, and I will talk to you guys there.